Yeah, hi again folks. I wanted to do a second video for the guys following up on my first prostate video. I had to do another one here because I received way more emails from people. Not not a ton, but a lot more emails than I ever expected to get to that first video on my prostate. Now, you guys know I have this fat loss program and I tried to make it clear that it focuses first on health. So, lest you think this has nothing to do with overall health, au contraire, very important here uh, for a bunch of reasons. The detox aspect of it, you guys know how I focus heavily on detox, and there's a reason why so many programs out there are latching on to detox. <sighs> multiple multiple reasons and in this atmosphere and environment we live in now we're just constantly exposed to toxins in such a way that it's making us sick sick and fat and tired and just a never-ending onslaught of problems so to continue along here uh, and go a little bit more into the prostatitis I promise not to use the word issues hardly at all this video. My gosh, did you hear me on that first one, folks? That was nuts. I must have said it like 800 plus times. Um, the the, the uh, chronic prostate is, it, oh, problems <laughs> that men get. If you might remember President Reagan from back in the early 80s, he, I'm pretty sure it was him. Now, I might i might be wrong, but I was, I'm pretty sure. He, at one point, had some sort of an issue that they called a prostate stone issue. And now you can do some research and find out about prostate calcification. That all basically ties into the same concept there that I was refer referencing in the first video regarding nanobacteria. So one of the ways that people, that men are dealing with this problem, there's a new protocol that's just come out literally in the past two or three years whereby they use EDTA chelation therapy. You take one of these suppositories and you uh, put it in overnight and it dissolves overnight and it's supposed to be similar to getting an IV based EDTA chelation. Now what this does, because this, the nanobacteria are supposed to be, uh, are allegedly surrounded by this calcium shell, it'll wash away the calcium to get more to the bacteria itself so that the bacteria can be killed. What they do is they couple the uh, EDTA chelation therapy with like tetracycline and anti the antibiotic tetracycline. Tetracycline is also known to be a chelator as are other antibiotics like um, doxycycline. And the idea is if we've got some kind of calcification stone nanobacteria issue going on in the prostate that's causing pain and inflammation, the EDTA and the chelation will wash away the calcium and the tetracycline or doxycycline will then get in there and kill the bacteria. Now here's the problem. This is a little bit of a controversial thing uh, to be using the EDTA suppositories and or the IVs to accomplish this because they say it will of course loosen up a lot of the heavy metals that we don't want to deal with such as the cadmiums. It'll hit mercury to an extent and uh, the calcium, of course, the excess calcium. Now, so what that's going to also do is leach a lot of our mineral content, so we have to be careful about that, and we need to be careful that as we're getting rid of these heavy metals that they don't redeposit themselves in other parts of the body. So for me, anyone out there who wants to experiment with a protocol like this, make sure you are taking zeolite with it. Contact me for more details if you want. It is absolutely vital that you do. I've never heard anyone else discuss it. In my opinion, it's a must, and I bet you I could get lots of top alternative doctors to agree with me on that. Now, along those lines, oh, uh, that guy, um, <laughs> Where am I here? What's my... I'm trying to... I wanted to have a uh, pleasant... Uh, there we go. I'll get to the other more pleasant pictures later. Um, the doctors t take you in when you are having some sort of a prostate discomfort, and they just sling antibiotics at all the men who come in with this kind of problem. Now, 
the worst thing about this is first, they should at least take a semen sample and determine what kind of bacteria, what's going on in there so that we can use the right kind of antibiotic to target whatever this bacteria is. Instead, what they do is give very broad spectrum antibiotics that have a huge kill profile, like the Cipro and the, um, the Leviquin, the doxycycline, the tetracycline and stuff. These things will kill lots and lots of bacteria. The problem is it will also kill a ton of your good bacteria. And that is not what we want. So you always want to be taking uh, probiotics along with anti an, any, and, any and all antibiotic courses that you take. Now, back to the chelation idea. It's things that we can do to help our prostates out. I'm a hu huge believer in getting rid of the mercury amalgam fillings. It's just bad news, folks. W mark my words on this. As soon as 20 years down the line, or certainly 50 years down the line, history's going to look back and say, what were they thinking putting this toxic metal in their mouth? So I don't care if they say it's an amalgam, therefore inert and safe. No, no. One atom's worth of mercury entering sublingually right into your bloodstream is no good for you ever. Now, here's the deal. What also happens down in the prostate is you get the cadmium, another heavy metal that accumulates in there, which is another reason why chelation is so great. And... If there is a fungal issue, yeast issue, candida issue, overgrowth in the body, and it's gone systemic, and it's lodging itself in your prostate as well, what do we now know about candida? When you kill off candida, you get mercury being released. Now, where the heck is the candida getting the darn mercury from, do you suppose? Now, don't get me wrong. There's atmospheric-type mercury out there. But could it be possibly helping the situation to be having these things in your mouth? My gosh, I don't think so, folks. I covered the inflammation issue a bit. You've all heard about the beta cytosterols that are used for prostate health and zinc. There's another form of, uh, there's another supplement that you can take that will help tremendously with the prostate when it comes to the BPH issues. It's called epilobium. So look that one up. Beta testosterone type products, the salpimetone and whatnot, uh, they're okay. If you get really high quality ones, okay, maybe. But try the epilobium instead and stay away from the uh, I won't say the brand names that we all see advertised on TV. As I said, you will get addicted to them, and once you go off them, you won't be able to pee anymore. As far as using natural type antibiotics, there's a ton we can experiment with to help nip in the bud any of these bacterial type conditions that might be existing. But guess what? There's also, Besides just being antibacterial, antifungal, and antiviral natural-ish remedies that we can use, such as MMS, Miracle Mineral Supplement, a form of bioavailable oxygenation. Many men who have had severe cases of prostatitis, painful versions that don't go away, have experienced tremendous relief with that. Do a search on that. Look up the name Jim Humble in association with MMS, Miracle Mineral Supplement, and check that, that out instead as a broad-spectrum antipathogen and as compared to just being antibacterial. So I'll leave it about there. I think I'm running out of time, and I think I've made most of my points. I'm going to cover this topic again because it's a, it's a big one and it's an important one, but... Go with that for now and contact me if you have any more questions. I hope this has been helpful. Love, happiness, health, and peace.